I'm Scott, and this is Great Scott Knitting, a vlog podcast thingy. And um, welcome to episode 21. Um, the episode is now uh, legally an adult. Um, if you're returning viewer, thanks for uh, coming back and checking out what I'm up to now. Um, and if you are new to this podcast, hey, thanks for coming by to check it out. I hope you like what you find here. Uh, today is Saturday, April 24th of 2021. Here in Wichita, Kansas, it was a lovely, clear uh, day of 70 degrees. Um, this past week, though, has been sort of a, a weather roller coaster. We had snow on Tuesday. Not a lot, just, you know, a, a basic dusting as though, you know, uh, some super being was, you know, putting powdered sugar over us or something. But um, snow nonetheless uh, in the middle of April. Um, and um, uh, we are still in the middle of the counting of the Omer. Um, the Omer is that uh, period of time between the Jewish celebration of Passover or Pesach and the celebration of Shavuot which is the commemoration of the receiving of Torah at Mount Sinai. And so um, we'll count the Torah tonight, or count the, uh, <laughs> count the Omer tonight. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotah b'tzibanu al svirat ha'omer hayom shmona v'esrim yom shehem arba'a Shavuot la Omer. Today is 28 days, which is four weeks in the Omer. Um, so we've counted the Omer. Uh, the the metaphysical or or um, kabbalistic uh, focus or meditation um, of this night, this 28th day of the Omer, is. Um, the leadership or nobility of endurance. Um, uh, in Hebrew, that is the uh, Malchus Shev Netzach. Um, so the leadership or the nobility um, aspect of endurance. Uh, to me, that kind of uh, brings to mind um, to to when when you're endeavoring uh, or whatever your endeavor is whatever you do um that you persevere that you p push through that you endure um and that you do so with your head held high and that um you do so to some extent as an example to to uh, those around you um as well as and as as for yourself to maintain a level of dignity as you endure whatever it is you are enduring you know it could be that you are, uh, have endurance around a hardship in your life or it could be that you have endurance in a good relationship or endurance in uh, knitting on a project um that you do that you don't let the struggle of it um after day after day after day uh weigh you down but um you hold your head up and you endure and you push forward and you get those things done which need to be done at least that's what comes to mind for me um so it has actually been three weeks since I last had an actual podcast, and um, I actually I took last week off. I was going to try, and uh, it just I don't know, it just didn't happen. Um, my mind was in uh, other places, so um, I'm here now. That's what's important. Um, I haven't forgotten. Uh, so some of the things that have happened in that period of time, um, I've had my second COVID vaccination. The 
um, Moderna vaccine is what I received. Um, so I do, did get that in my arm. Um, really no major side effects. Again, just some basic fatigue and my arm was much more um, pained this time than last. Now, my spouse was down for three days. Um, my neighbor was down for three days. Uh, and for that matter, my nephew, when he got his second vaccination, was also down for probably a day and a half. Um, I just didn't have that reaction. I don't know if it's because I was hydrated better or, I don't know, maybe I took aspirin at just the right moment. Um, or maybe it's just how my body reacts to vaccinations. I just didn't have a huge thing. But um, I'm coming up now on being fully uh being considered fully vaccinated because the period of time is almost up that uh, since I had that second vaccination. So um, that's good. But, you know, I, if you haven't got your vaccination, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, it Even if you do have a, a reaction, they do tend to be mild. And it is also an indication that your body is responding to the vaccination. It's not that you're getting sick or getting COVID. It's just your body's responding. So get your shot. Get your shots, for that matter. Or, you know, get the Johnson & Johnson if you don't like shots. Get the one shot. Yes, there have been some issues with that vaccination, but they are marginally uh, the percentage of of issues that caused them to pause was so minuscule that the pause was really out of a huge abundance of caution. So get your shots. Um, if not for yourself, for those around you. But um, so that there's that. I'll get off that soapbox. Um, the other thing that has happened in this three-week period is I became very um, focused on the idea of having a um, a, a camera, um, and, and not just uh, not just a you know a standard you know little little instamatic pocket type camera, but I've had those in the past, and they do really quite well. I, in fact, I traveled to Europe with one very similar, um, a relatively small, instant point-and-shoot. And came out with some very lovely photos that are uh, you know, not blurry and well-composed and good exposure and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I was really pl quite pleased with it. But um, I've been wanting to kind of step it up. Uh, the... My uh, iPhone camera takes passable photographs for what, you know, what is nice. But, you know, a, a few, well, about a month and a half ago, um, there were some really lovely evenings where the moon was full and shining bright. And I wanted to take a picture of it. And, well, you know what? It, cell phone cameras just don't do the moon justice. That, and I really uh, enjoy taking pictures of the Kansas sunsets. Now, I don't know. I, I'm sure the sunsets, wherever you live, are absolutely beautiful. Um, but I grew up here. And for me, Kansas sunsets on the open prairie where you can see the edge of of the world because there's no trees or mountains or buildings or things between you and that edge and you see the earth in its circular form and you see the sun go down and due to the dust particles in the air and the clouds and how things are in Kansas the colors that refract and 
cast up as the sun goes down over the horizon are, to me, breathtaking. And I like to try and capture as much of that as possible. And, if, you know, I, I have had some really lovely photographs of um, the flora and fauna and skies and landscapes around me using my iPhone camera. But I just keep feeling like there's more and better. Um, and I also like taking pictures of my knitting. And I keep thinking, well, the iPhone does a nice job, um, but I think there's it, it can be done better. So I've decided and researched, and I've decided to get a camera. Well, I actually um, did my research, decided what type of camera I wanted, uh, what I would believed I was am ready for at this point in my photographic skills. And so I have purchased a camera. I have purchased what is called a bridge camera. It is um, a point and shoot camera, but it is not your just standard pocket little instamatic point and shoot. It is very much like a, and right now it's charging because I used it really all day. Um, here it is. It's very much like a DSLR or a digital, um, digital professional camera. Um, and this one happens to be called a bridge camera, which means it's, it's, a point and shoot so it has a single lens fixed um but it has a lot of the same options as a um D, a professional dslr camera so um that's kind of what i wanted it was something that would be i could easily pick up grab it take a quick snapshot and have a really good picture um, but also one that I could learn to um, compose photographs with, uh, to create photographs, um, not just take photographs. So um, this is what I have chosen. It is a Kodak um, PixPro Astro Zoom. 652. Um, now, for most professional photographs, Kodak doesn't even register as an option. Canon, Nikon, Sony for that matter, um, tons of other well-known camera and photography companies are what most people get but for the money for me and my level of expertise this is the camera i chose number one it has a huge zoom lens i can get up to 65 times of a zoom uh, of an optical zoom with this lens um, which was astounding to me i'll show you a couple of pictures later um of the moon it's it, i've never taken pictures of the moon so clearly and so fully and been so pleased um it has a fully articulating lcd screen so i could use it to do this podcast if I want to. I'm not um, at this point, but I could. Um, and I can also place the camera on a tripod and then put it in different angles and still be able to use that LCD screen to see what I'm doing, which I find um, really quite helpful and, 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 and a useful concept. And uh, yes, I did get a tripod to go with it. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased with it.
Oh, it's also Wi-Fi enabled, so I can connect it to my, my I can connect it to my cell phone and operate it from my cell phone if I so choose, as well as download pictures directly to my to my cell phone. So that's kind of a nice feature as well. So a lot of nice features that I liked, and the price point was within well, kind of at the top of what I was hoping to spend. Um, but that's what I have, and I've been having a just a blast with it. Um, I mean, I've had it since this past Thursday, and I've just enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, so there's that. I have purchased my camera. Now, my one of my original hopes before I did my research was to be able to use a camera like this as an external camera to my computer so I could have sort of a multi-camera -cam multi setup. My research quickly um, dissuaded me from that as a possibility. Um, Sony does have some cameras that will do that, uh, some DSLR type cameras that will do that, um, but none of the other major camera manufacturers uh, provide that level of access. So um, that did, for some reason, that did not dissuade me from wanting to have a camera for taking still photos. Now, this camera will also take video. That's a key thing to remember as well. Um, so I also decided that, well, I am, have not been pleased with the camera that came that is just simply on installed on my laptop. I think I wanted some better quality. And I don't know if you notice, but I do. Um, I have a now a um, camera that is much uh, clearer and better. So I have purchased a webcam for my computer that uh, gives me much better um, uh, imagery. So um, there was that. Uh, so I'm very, really quite pleased with all of these things. Um, but this technically is not a digital photography and video podcast blog thingy. This is actually a knitting podcast vlog thingy. And so I think really I should transition now to talking uh, primarily about knitting. Um, I have been knitting on a regular basis every day, quite frankly, but my progress is slow going. Um, work keeps me very busy. And home life is, of course, always busy. And spring is now coming along. And so um, more activities outside require some of my time as well as just you know, upkeep and maintenance of a home. Uh, as you move into the spring months, um, things come up. So my time to knit has been less than it was this time last year, for example. So my productivity has been a little slower. But on one level, I think I'm enjoying it more uh, than I did last year or in the past, even though I'm going a bit slower. I'm, my pace of create, having finished objects is not as... Uh, voracious. But uh, maybe that's just an a another aspect of how I sometimes will shift from being a process knitter or a project knitter where it's about the finished project um, to a process knitter. It's about knitting. And I think right now I'm in a, in a point in my uh, knitting life where it's much more about just knitting and not worrying so much about getting the project done. I'm not on a deadline. It's not uh, the holidays at this point. 
So I do have a finished object though. That being said, my April socks, not just the one, but both have been completed. And I really, um, I'm really pleased with these. These, I, I think they look really quite lovely. Um, they are, um, of course, my um, rendition of the Sockmatician's Toe Up socks um, by Nathan Taylor. It's more of a recipe that you, um, or a formula of how to knit toe up socks as opposed to a cut and dried uh, pattern. But I highly recommend it. Um, I don't know, that right there. I always get my angles wrong. Anyway, um, it's a great pattern, recipe, thing. Um, but here are my socks. Now, I did embellish these socks with a pattern, which is really quite a, a, just a simple knitting and purling pattern that I added to the top of the sock and onto the leg, just to give it a little bit more interest. Um, the yarn I am using is... Um, a knit crate yarn from uh, a couple months ago that I got. Um, it is the Audine Wool's alpaca sock in the colorway called Napoli. Um, this is a 60% superwash merino wool, 20% alpaca, and 20% nylon. Um, and I don't know if you can see the halo of alpaca that is on this sock. They are super soft, and the colorway is really pretty. It's a very um, sort of grays and greens, so it's um, a really pretty sock, too. And it was a lot of fun to knit up. They actually went very quickly. Maybe I'm getting better at my sock knitting. Um, now, that was the only knitting I got done. I did get a couple of skeins dyed um, recently. Um, now, if you remember from last episode, I have re uh, started using professional dyes from Jacquard, uh, Jacquard Acid Dyes. Now, this is the first skein that I did. I showed this last time um, using just red, blue, and yellow, basic primary colors. Um, I love how it turned out it's just really pretty but i wanted something to kind of go with it as a neutral so i um did my math and i did up a um dye stock of uh true black but i didn't want black i wanted gray so i um created a dye stock that had a 0.06% depth of shade, which gave me this lovely gray. Now, technically, it is not a 0.06, it's actually a 0.12, um, 0.12% depth of shade, because I did a 0.06 twice, because I, I didn't like how, I wanted it a little uh, more deep and I also wanted it a little more homal. So there's this absolutely lovely. Um, and then after that I was like, oh, let's speckle. I haven't speckled using these. I mean, it's like I've done some um, some real heavy variegated. Now I've done a tonal. Now I want to do a speckle. So I did some speckling. Now, this did not go entirely as I'd hoped, although there's some really lovely speckles in there. Um, my first round of speckling was not entirely even. Um, so I noticed, I you know, it wasn't until after it was dried and, and I looked at it and I was like, okay, I'm not really happy. So I re-soaked it and 
um, applied more speckles in it is still the primary colors of red blue and uh, yellow with black as well um, but I wasn't happy so I re speckled it reset it um, and then um, it's I don't know it just wasn't working for me so I took the skein even after having set it threw it into a just a pot of um, acid water you know just some water with some citric acid in it and uh, set it again simply in a in a pot of water for 20 minutes and it caused that black to sort of go all over and give it a much this moodier deeper look to it which this I like. So either I'm going to use all three of these in a project, or I don't know, maybe I won't. These are all Dyer Supplier 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Fingering Weight Yarn. Um, so I could use them mix and match, or um, I don't know, I'll find some lovely projects for those. I really am enjoying this. Um, I think I'm going to go into a slightly different direction in the future and if, with, with my dyeing. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but that's been fun. So those are my finished objects that I have going on. My works in progress. Um, there are a couple of things that are sort of not no longer really in progress but they are works that are on hold and that is my flax sweater and my building blocks um, blanket um, i'm just not motivated for those but the other thing i am working on is my color strike um, the pattern it's a shawl by uh, josh uh, reeks robinski let me just pop that up here um, an absolutely gorgeous shawl uh, pattern, and it's really quite uh, really quite easy to read. Um, but I will share with you my progress on that. Make sure I show you the right side. Yeah, here we go. So here is how it has come along. So it starts down here with some basic striping, and then. It comes into some um, slip stitch sections and then into some chevrons and we're going back into some striping. And the yarn I'm using is um, 316 Dye Studio. She is a Kansas dyer, so check out her stuff. Um, her yarns are just absolutely beautiful. Oh, and here's the dark. Beautiful, beautiful yarns. A lot of fun to work with. Um, so I've been really enjoying the process of knitting that shawl with those yarns. I think it's knitting up really quite nicely. Um, so that's really my work in progress. Uh, I don't, I really don't have anything else in the needles and nothing really is uh, pressing on me to continue uh, with any kind of other casting on. I'm just really enjoying where I'm at. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at with my knitting. Um, let's see, what else is going on? I've told you most of the other stuff, so I guess it's really, you know, the 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 hole that I've gone down with um, taking pictures. So I really do kind of want to share some of the pictures I have been taking. Um, just just a couple, because um, I don't know, I think I'm, even though I'm extremely much an amateur's amateur at photography, I mean, this is... I'm kind of at a point where I feel like before, well, and, and, and 
for most of my life, I've, it's been like um, a beginning knitter where they use the tools of a beginner. They use chunkier yarns. They use larger needles to learn the process. And I feel like I've been doing that a lot in terms of my photography. I've been using rudimentary tools and getting sort of to start the, the learning process, um, but never really advanced beyond that. Well, now I'm using some different tools. I'm moving up towards, um, I'm, I'm not using Chow Gu at this point, but I've certainly uh, moved up to maybe um, Knitter's Pride in terms of my equipment, um, if only to try and create some kind of loose analogy in terms of using better equipment and getting better results as I progress in my um, photography skills, if indeed I have any. Um, really doesn't matter because I'm having fun and, and that's that's the key so um yeah so let me show you some of the things that I have been able to create so far um I took some pictures of this is in my neighbor's backyard and I took these from my back porch which is a good I don't know probably um 50 feet away and using the telephoto lens and some of the various settings i was able to take this photograph earlier today um which i think turned out really nicely um went driving around and uh came across this mural which um, I thought was really fun. And so I took a snap of that. And then there's this. This is the one I'm like just amazed by is the picture of the moon that I was able to capture earlier this evening. And how, number one, how clear it is and how big the moon appears i mean this is this is the the moon photograph i've always wanted to be able to take in my past and i don't know it feels like i can do it now and have it look decent so that's kind of where i'm at I'm kind of looking at these two hobbies of my knitting where I, I feel like I've reached a level of accomplishment with my knitting. I'm very comfortable and happy with how my knitting goes. And I feel as though right now I could generally take any pattern any type of knitting and figure it out. Yeah, I still need to delve into the concept of color work and stranded knitting and that type of thing. Um, I've really never attempted it. So that's, that's one of those things that I do want to endeavor to do. But um, I feel like I, I have the skills that I could do it. And I have enough um, knowledge about where to go to get support. And, you know, there's different things that come into play. You've got your tools, you've got the yarn, and you can get different, different types of tools, like you know, different kneading needles, um, whether they be straight or circular, um, uh, fixed or or uh, you know uh, adjustable you know whatever your tools are that those come together and what we get 
when we bring these tools together with our own personal skills and and our own personal vision of how to execute a pattern using yarn and color and knitting needles that what we get in the end is really quite truly greater than the sum of its individual ingredients um, which i think is 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 so cool i come from a musical background where um both from a a singing per, uh, perspective the choral perspective or an instrumental ensemble perspective that the the whole is greater than the sum of its parts it's something that it's a philosophy that i've always been very very aware of that when you bring different elements together and you bring and you put them together with a level of passion and joy that what you get at the end is greater than just having put them together that there is something more there and I, i'm beginning to feel that a little bit of the same with photography that you can take a picture but when you start getting into the artistry of photography, you start to realize that there's a lot of ingredients that come into the creation of a really good photograph. That it's more than just pointing a camera at an object and pushing a button that there is an the the idea of of composition lighting um and then the tool itself you know being able to manipulate um, aperture shutter speed um and uh exposure and all these different things can come together to create a picture not just take one and so it, it, for me, it's you bring these different elements together and with your own vision and passion, create something that's greater than just maybe what a computer could do. Because there's that, that inspiration, that soul part in there, that life that has breathed into it. Um, Again, I wax philosophical, as I often do. Uh, I hope you don't mind um, that I get kind of deep in the weeds with some of these things. But, you know, it's. I think everyone should explore a method by which they express themselves. By which they can calm themselves. Like, for me, knitting is one of those things that helps keep me centered, keeps me calm keeps me uh enduring i guess you could say um and i think for me photography is also going to be another one of those avenues but it's an entirely different mode of expression um and it's one that will be helpful to get me out of the house 2020 has kept me pretty much homebound um and that's become very comfortable for my introverted self to remain homebound with this hobby there's only so many things i can take a picture of around the house and so it's going to get me out of the home a little bit. The one thing that is also similar, and maybe it's a downside, and especially for me as an introvert and a um, someone who 
it has at times it been socially awkward. I'm not comfortable in groups of people. I like small, intimate settings of groups of people or simply doing things on my own. And so knitting is very much a solitary art. Uh, you, you can do it amongst other people, but the doing of it is very singular. Photography, it, to me, is very much in that same fashion. You can do it amongst other people, but the doing of it is singular. Um, only one person can look through the viewfinder and click the button. Only one person can hold the needles and move that string through uh, across those needles to create something. So, um, in a sense, those these two have some strong similarities, even though um, it exercises some different muscles, and for me, some very uh, uh, some very different muscles. Now, also, I think I'm hoping that this um, foray into the visual arts of photography will also give me inspiration on dyeing yarn through, you know, taking a picture of something that's colorful and interesting and then translating those colors and uh, maybe the feeling into... Um, a very abstract nature of color on fiber. Um, I'm not giving up on my dyeing yarn. It's too much freaking fun. But um, now I have yet another hobby. Uh, I have knitting. I have purchasing yarn. I have dyeing yarn. I have uh, purchasing of uh, dye colors and, uh, and bare yarn. And now I have photography. So... Will there be any money for food and housing and clothing? I do not know, but I'll have the yarn. I could make my own sweaters. Um, no worries. Uh, I I will always endure uh, amongst all of the the things that I now have as my uh, crafts and artistic expressions. So, um, all right, so I've kind of used up enough of your time. Yes, precursor, foreshadowing. Um, I'm bringing, uh, bringing this episode uh, to a close. So I hope you have enjoyed spending a little bit of time uh, listening to me ramble about knitting and photography and getting your COVID shot and um philosophizing about all of those things and how your passion when applied uh to whatever it is you're passionate about your endurance applied to those things um brings about something greater than just putting together string and uh pointing a camera or whatever it is that you craft yourself to do, that when you're in the mix of it, it's greater than just the putting it together. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So um, with that, thank you so much for being here today. You can find me out on the... Uh, virtual world um through facebook i have a page called great scott knitting um on instagram i am great scott knitting in ravelby ravelry i am great scott kcmo um so feel free to hit me up on any of those places if you have questions comments or thoughts or you can also add your comments uh down below right here on youtube Please like this video if you have enjoyed your time. Um, it helps grow this channel and yeah, other people get to see it as well. 
Um, subscribe if you do like what you see on this channel. Again, it helps me to uh, attract other people who might be interested. And um, if you want to be notified of new content, uh, click that little bell icon for that. Um, all right, so thank you so much for being here. Uh, may you have peace in your home and the fullness of joy for all who dwell there. Goodbye.